Okay. What happened to the document? There it is. Okay. Share screen. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Here it is. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yes. Let me. It's very large. I know. It's because I can't oh, see. It. Getting better. All right. So we had the greetings, uh, introduction of work group members. Just wave everybody. Uh, we're going to go over the scope of work. Um, we're going to go over the presentation of the work plan template. We're dividing our group into three subgroups, A, B, and C. And we're going to ask you each to volunteer for one of those groups. And we're going to try to evenly break you out into those three groups. Then a calendar overview, uh, Q&A, and recommended reading. All right. So the scope of work. We have basically, I'm, let me bring up the work template. So if I if I look if I look at the math, there are eight of us. Three of us are the co-chairs. Adrian is a uh, our uh, advisor, and I think Meredith will be joining us later. So that leaves three people. So one one person of the committee into the A, B, and C. That's how the math works out right now. So we. We have a committee of two for each subgroup. Well, maybe what we'll do is assign people. Uh, only one person said they couldn't make this, so. And you were good to send out the reminder as well, so. I did that this time just to see if that would help. Okay, so. There are only three areas from the uh, large from the entire work group plan that fall under our particular work group, and that is uh, and uh, Myra was uh, uh, was took the template and broke it down into the three different areas we're responsible for. So if you look under the strategy, it's the user data to present uh, to understand present and future local workforce needs, diversify representation in search committees with members of diverse educational background, gender, and ethnicity. And under the first part, there was one proposed activity, record, uh, require record keeping of hiring decisions to allow for specialized statistical analysis of key hiring to measure impact and progress towards increasing the diversity of faculty and staff. Hi guys. That's My fine. apologies for being late. It's Meredith. I just had to drop a call from the office. Hi Meredith. Hi. Good morning, Meredith. Welcome. Morning. Thank you. Um, and then B, districts and colleges, Association of Chief Human Resources Officers, Academic Center for California Community Colleges. Uh, chief instructional officers to develop guidance on including staff from other disciplines, departments, divisions on hiring and screening committees, and finally C, district and colleges to revise their policies and procedures every five years and include cross-functional staff in hiring and screening committees, including staff from other disciplines and uh, departments, divisions, and classified staff. So those were the three proposed DEI activities we identified or what was identified was a vision for success alignment. We're gonna ask each of you to select whether you wanna be part of A, B, or C. And then each group is gonna be responsible for identifying key tasks 
we need to complete these by early October of 2020. So we've got a short time frame here if we want to finish this. We want to finish our part within six months to give six months to push it out to the colleges for um, implementation. So th that is our task today. And, our, and what we are to do is develop uh, a work kit of best practices that we're going to push out to each of these uh, particular, to, to, be, to push out to the colleges. So any questions about what our role is? And Debbie, if I may, um, the, uh, so more so than developing a work kit is actually uh, developing tools that will go into the work kit um, for, um, for the areas that we are, because um, I am thinking that um, there's already a set of uh, model processes uh, that has been developed and uh, I, I'm hoping that, uh, that what we will do, um, the diversity, equity and inclusion work group will do is to expand with the work that we are all doing, all the system partners are doing. Perfect. Have we pushed those out to everybody already? Uh, the uh, model. Do you mean the uh, hiring? The, mo the model hiring? Yeah. Processes? Yeah. Because I, I guess it went live now, huh? It's yeah, it's live now. Uh huh. And then to what extent? I guess, are the colleges implementing those? Do we know? Uh, we are actually, uh, uh, as, you, as we speak, uh, we have been, um, well, we, we're working on the communication uh, strategy and uh, they, we will begin um, in September uh, the, um, uh, the different webinars and trainings uh, to, related to, to what is in the uh, model um, processes and procedures. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole Canvas site, is, it's brand new. So this is uh, the perfect timing to keep adding tools uh, yeah. to help to with it. the implementation of those particular yeah. and develop best practices. Yeah, and that is if in fact uh, we determine uh, as, uh, as, as the trustee group uh, if that is the appropriate place, uh, because you know that conversation would be one that I think uh, Adian, with her team and Meredith, will need to have, because um, you know uh, the uh, the toolkit is very focused to faculty. Um, as we are uh, doing our work, um, uh, you know, some of us are also working on other other employees groups in, within the system, no. Mm -hmm. um, and so that keep keeping that in mind. Well, the other place for potentially uh, affecting um, the policies around hiring is I opened my mouth uh, yesterday in the DEI implementation task force meeting and promised to look into creating a, uh, a statewide task force to look at the policies and procedures that the league puts out. So they, the, at most of our districts subscribe to the policy service and they receive all of those. And the idea being um, uh, those probably replicate um, barriers that we don't want replicated and they should be reviewed with a, a racial equity lens and rewritten. And so we will need a team to look at that. So that's another place where um, your good ideas could um, find a home. So that exactly. would fall under um, DEI activity C, yeah. where we talk about the district and colleges revising their policies. Perhaps so the, the goal of that committee can be to take a look at the existing policies and proceed, uh, policies and um, send out some suggest, suggested new policies to CCLC. Yeah, and, I, and uh, I think that Adrian, it's going to be really important that those that sign up, I know that Sue, it will be the one um, facilitating that group, uh, that uh, there's a coordination. No? Uh, if, uh, if you end up, you know, developing a task force to look at that, that uh, perhaps, you know, our group, um, our smaller group can actually become an active member 
Absolutely. Uh, and yes, yeah. mm -hmm. cross functional other major organizations because yeah, it's, mm -hmm. we have a policy that uh, the faculty can't support, and so it all has to be. Yeah, and so those are the uh, that's the other area that we have to you know continue to think about the system partners. And I know the system partners are mentioned uh, in some of um, in some of our activities um, that we'll be doing. Um, but we could further you know the list of system partners that need to be involved. All right. So um, can I ask a question? What was that? Someone is asking. This is this is Ludmila. So these um, model hiring processes are there. Uh, is there somewhere that this the, the members of this group can go to to view? Oh sure, yeah. I'll go ahead and post the uh, the link on the chat. on this chat. Uh -huh. Well, as uh, Adrian has suggested, if we review those and see which ones need to be modified, I think that's uh, a, one of the things that we should be looking at. I'm wondering, though, as a work, as our work group in total, do we prepare everything and at some point uh, present it as a whole versus A, B, and C? What do you think, Adrian? What 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 would you like us to? To proceed, you know, uh, I, I think I think use your own judgment on that. Um, I, I think I do think it's a good idea to be presenting the material, the parts of the of the materials you're working on that you feel like are complete, little by little. And we have the space in the webinars, for instance, to do that kind of introduction and and so on. Um, there's something to be said for that, um, just because it. It gives you a little early opportunity to get feedback. Well, for example, today's topic is going to be on hiring practices, and that's essentially what Part C is. So if that's being presented already, well, I guess all of us should be watching it today, <laughs> for one. But, but then, because uh, I'm not sure who's presenting, and is it something that we would just supplement or we see something that we would say, oh, well, um, this needs to be, mod I mean, I'm sure that they've modified it, you know, through this lens of DEI. So I, I'm not quite sure how far then do we expand upon that? So that, um, that particular uh, activity, um, uh, C, uh, if you could go there, uh, Debbie, for a moment, uh, it is actually, um, there's not a really a, um, a mechanism at this point in time for uh, hiring policies and procedures in terms of timeline to be actually updated and revised by colleges and districts. And so, uh, and so the idea is that we actually, um, uh, the committee brainstorms and brings about a recommendation for what, uh, what, how frequent should that be happening and of course, there's already uh, in the act, in the activity there's already a um, a proposal, no, of you know every five years, right. and um, but the the part that's going to be really important is that um, that uh, how do we who's included in the revision, and um, it sounds like uh, at least from the experience that I've had as a faculty leader uh, through AS Triple C uh, over the last. Uh, several years is that uh, the review, it's all over in terms of the timeline and then who's involved. And, um, and so I, I think it would be uh, a benefit uh, from, um, from the perspective of the trustees and, uh, and uh, policy uh, to determine, um, to be more intentional in, in, uh, in how that happens. And Sue, the, um, the actual webinar for t later on today, the noon webinar is on exit interviews and faculty. Well, that's what, okay. yeah, it's I think it was last week when uh, I'm looking at uh, my notes and it was talking about how while we trustees can't micromanage, but we can set the policy and uh, you know who's to be included in that. So I guess 
I guess I read that wrong. But nonetheless, it's that, you know, we, we are looking at this. And uh, I, I, you know, after uh, Myra's uh, just spoke, you know, I can see where, you know, that's our direction. Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, I, and again, I think that, uh, that we're really thinking, I know um, Adrian can attest to this based on the conversation yesterday at the DEI implementation work group meeting. You know, we're really, we're really, uh, we're really uh, should, you know, should feel brave. And when I say feel brave, I feel, I say, uh, you know, what is not working, if it's time to let go, we let go. And then we create something new. Um, uh, that is part of the perspective, you know, when we talk about dismantling racism, that is part of the perspective that we, um, that it's important to keep in mind uh, that you have, and I think Adrian mentioned it, uh, uh, this, you know, earlier today, um, uh, that, uh, that it is important that we uh, try to figure out what, uh, within the structures of those policies that we, a lot of us utilize, um, our, our, our policies that continue to, um, to continue to, um, to, um, I guess, keep this, maintain the status quo. No. <laughs> I, I will say CCLC policies tend to be, policies tend to be very general. And it's the procedures, which are not really ours. The procedures or administrative regulations are driven by the districts and the administration. So as board members, we develop the policies. So we need to, as Adrian said, she's putting together a task force. So Sue, for sure you ought to be on that task force because what you need to do is pull out the current CCLC policies, that task force, take a look at them and see if you can make the policies a little bit more specific then uh, to include cross-functional um, staffing to the point of, that you can get that done. You can recommend it and if CCLC will adopt it then, then, I, then the administrative regulations or procedures that the districts develop will help to push the agenda along. And then I'd like to help Sue on that. And then, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's Meredith. I'd like to help Sue on that because I think what I've seen is that what student cohorts need are policies focused on their particular barriers. And the only way that we can get to that is the way that you guys are talking about, which is for the policies to inform as well as facilitate that type of work cross disciplines, cross, um, I guess, positions. And then the other thing that uh, we want to keep in mind, um, th those policies, um, those templates, I call it the templates, but our, our policies uh, developed by uh, our legal folks and, uh, it, and, and their, fo their policies that are basically uh, about compliance, no? Uh, about compliance, you know, under, under uh, Ed Code and Title V. Um, and so, and so uh, you know, are we, we're, are we, I don't think we're no longer talking about compliance, no, we're talking about empowerment. And so how do you build policies that empower? And, um, and so I, I, um, I, I think it is important for us to think about, about that. Um, and that it's part of the DEI report, no, that little graphic that that talks about the, the there's the three circles that move from compliance to empowerment um that's where we want to move okay. can can i um this is vicky gordon and <clears throat> does anybody know laura from cassidy and whitmore uh, yes it, yes yeah she's so actually the i think she's uh, a very important person in yes those, those policies <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So she came and did a um, yeah. a workshop for us, and 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 um, not too long ago, a few months back, mm -hmm. and she gave us examples of where policies were similar, and but the actions and the problems in the different, and this was in law enforcement. Um, these were, I believe, sheriff offices, and. Um, they, she basically compared one to the other where one was 
supposedly followed, but there were huge problems. And another one where they were followed and that they were handled head on. And the question she asked to the group was, so if there's all these similarities, where was the difference? And I'm sorry if I'm making anybody uncomfortable, but I just believe we have to have these uncomfortable conversations. And I spoke up and I said, well, then it has to be in your highest leadership. And she said, exactly. If your highest leadership is not buying into these policies and not implementing them fairly across the board and showing with actions the support for these, um, anyway, I thought it was a very important piece. It was an aha moment for me because seven years we started this process in our district and in seven years we have not moved the needle. And unfortunately for me, I've been um, sticking my neck out and having those important or those difficult conversations. Um, we just really have to realize we have got to, um, We have got to lead by example at the highest levels. That's all so, I want to say. Right. So, Vicky, I have a question uh, for you. Um, since you have sounds like you've been in the journey, uh, you know, over re recent time, you know, this last seven years. So, if uh, if uh, if you haven't seen change uh, uh, as these policies are being implemented, what what uh, what is your uh, thought or perspective about what needs to happen? Oh, interesting you should say that. Uh, I, I think I agree with Laura. I think that I think we are in the process of hiring a new chancellor, but I think it goes deeper than that. <clears throat> and while we are having these conversations and they are longtime employees, I just um, think that the district would need to take another direction with top level employees. It just seems like there is biases there and I, it's, it's going to make districts look unstable or going to make them look um, risky. And I think, I think we need to start the conversation that it's, it's, it's a brave action. It's a um, necessary action. And um, I just think that I love that we're doing this and the timing is right. But for me, and I, and I know we're supposed to stay in our lanes and we're not supposed to micromanage and I get all that, but we also have oversight and we also just need to set the tone by being very clear in our actions, I guess. And in our policy. I'd like to jump in if I may. Okay, uh, hang, on a second. hang on a second. Uh, I think Meredith had her hand up first. So Meredith. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to say that in 2015, Tween, uh, Lynn was looking at policy. She was uh, pushing forward with revising the uh, regulations when she was in the office of, when she was the general counsel, interim general counsel for uh, the state chancellor's office. And one of the things that Twee said and did that is now being reflected in the work that's coming out in this DEI equity uh, agenda is that she said you got to look at the regs and the regs that talk about diversity meeting the needs of the students and everything flows from there so this is really a template that started that i saw at least the first time i saw it was 2015 and the the as as vicky said and as myra said the um the regs are already there you know we've had the, the civil rights um we've had title seven we've had the civil rights act of 1960 uh, four, five for how many years now? Um, and we're still uh, trying to make sure that people have their rights respected. And so I, what it is really is it's, it's part of it giving the exemplary um, training so that when you're doing, so what we're doing is we're giving examples. We have to provide the template, but we also have to show as, as was described, what, how things are done now versus how things should be done. You know, part of it is showing people the, the yin and the yang together so that they see what was and what should be. And we and so I think what we're doing with this process is, you know, we're we're looking at the policies as they are, but they within the law, 
they, there still is room for movement. And I remember sitting at the table with Twee and with another lawyer, but actually with a bunch of lawyers, and Twee was, is a lawyer, and she's saying, look, we could change this. You know, we could change these regs. We could be more clear. And she got a lot of pushback because there was not the same understanding, desire, Lynn's commitment. So there's room within the law to, um, to give clarifying language. And I think that's what we could do. And, um, you know, so we don't have to, in other words, be bound by the letter of the, of the policies that we have, the examples. Because I watched Twee say we could change this. And even within 209, there's room for clarification and example that, that and she started that work five years ago. Okay. Yeah, uh, the state chancellor's office is inviting that kind of change. I mean, they've, uh, they've already, I think it's in second or it's going into third reading on a, a, a completely revised statement about what diversity means and including, including a lot more specific language. You know, um, about anti-racism and so on. So um, that, but they had said that's just the beginning. Then the intention is to go in and modify the regulations also to, to be explicitly anti-racist. Not just neutral, not just general, but explicitly anti-racist. And committees like ours can provide suggestions for instance, if we wanted to uh, suggest changes to a board policy, but it seems it seems as though that would conflict with regulations as they are now. We can we can say to the um, the DEI task force at the state level who would communicate to the board of governors, this is what needs to change in the regulation in order to permit us to do this thing. Okay, uh, Mirna Lopez, you're next. Yes, uh, Mirna Lopez. So what I, I was on the webinar, the weekly webinar last week, and uh, it was very helpful. Um, one of the things that, um, that was presented there, I think, um, you know, there's all these constraints, but at the same time, the Board of Trustees have oversight. And one of the things is that, um, that board of trustees can look at what are what what are the communications that are required um, back to them. I thought one was very helpful to require um, staff to report in in more frequency uh, the staff, the updates on hiring practices, checking back on uh, status reports. Um, and interim uh, analyses so that um, changes can be made or direction can be clarified to staff um, and what and the trustees can see what the progress is. That's a, these things are important so that there is um, uh, more frequency and again uh, direction can be clarified. But two, it's also transparency, not only for the Board of Trustees, but for the public. And I think that is, is critical. I and mean, it, anyone who is in this um, has to know that throughout this process and going forward, um, it's, there, there are going to be very uncomfortable conversations throughout. So, um, but I, 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 that's one point. The other point is that all these work groups, I think are, we're gonna come up with some similar uh, recommendations. And I think it would be good to know how we can have that same, that foundation of this whole effort of like what were the common best practices um, so that, um, so that it's a coherent uh, process. I don't know, you know, how you can do that, but I think that those things that were discussed from, I think, work group two or three it was last week, that um, we can incorporate in our recommendations as well. Thank you, David. 
I, uh, so I think a lot of why the districts do have a hard time in actually moving the needle and meeting the diversity needs of students is because uh, students themselves don't always have a table. Or I see it at the table in terms of hiring committees um, and districts. I feel like districts do need to be a little bit more proactive in, in looking for those students, the students that specifically would benefit from, from a higher diversity. Um, and to have them take partake in the hiring process. I know that at PCC, I myself had to coordinate with, a, with our HR office to set up an EEO training for our associated students. And if I hadn't done that, then we wouldn't have had an EEO training to begin with. And so I had to make sure that our school had a more diverse pool of students that were able to partake in hiring committees. So I think what we can do different is to actually codify a way for, for districts to always make sure that students are going to be uh, at the at the table and may and partaking in these very important decisions. All right. Okay. So, so um, Debbie, before we move forward, um, I wanted to ask uh, Adrian because um, I think it's important for all of us to probably know that uh, if uh, Adrian and Meredith can uh, speak a little bit about uh, the question that I post on the chat. You know, uh, the organizational strategy to report back. Uh, to the EI, DEI work group. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, Lumirna uh, brought up something very important. What we discuss here may, may, may in fact uh, be similar uh, with what, what we come up with, maybe uh, so, somewhat similar to other groups that are working, all the other groups, uh, trustee groups that are working. And so how, what is the strategy to, to consolidate or, and then report back? Well, uh, we actually um, just ha had the deadline to submit our first report um, yesterday at 5 p.m. And I submitted a report for Triple CT, and the other seven major organizations had that same deadline. And those are gonna be consolidated and, and part of the Board of Governors agenda for the next Board of Governors meet, the September meeting. So um, as soon as, and, and we were told that we will receive the consolidated version. So I think it's very important that all of our work groups receive those reports so that they know what the other organizations are doing. Um, then the other thing I would say is, is to develop connections with, um, with the other organization work groups. And we'll have to find out who, who are the chairs of those and so on. At the, at the CEO level at ACT um, uh, uh, faculty um, and, and uh, invite them to our meetings to uh, run, run by them some of the ideas that we have and, and see what their thoughts might be. I'm sorry, Adrian, um, that's not, uh, I, I wasn't clear on the question that I asked. I was actually thinking about the coordination of the trustee, uh, the different subgroups that we have, and we're group one. Um, oh that the coordination internally of us, it's what I was actually um, referring to. <laughs> well, okay, that's even easier. So <laughs> the idea is that the first meeting of, of the steering committee every month, we want the co-chairs to come in. And in fact, this next one is gonna be September 1st. So that's, that's an announcement I was about to send out to everybody that each, um, this, is the, this is Tuesday, at, uh, let's see, the DEI steering committee meets Tuesdays at 8 p.m., 8 a.m., sorry. So we would invite the co-chairs from all of the work groups to come in, and we would, we would, uh, we would report on your status to me, and then you can bring up issues and questions and co collaborative matters. Uh, we'll provide space for, for that kind of discussion. Um, Hopefully, there'll be a lot of cross-pollination. So, uh, the steering committee's meeting the first Tuesday of every month? We meet every Tuesday, but we would invite the co-chairs to come in the first Tuesday. Okay. I just want to calendar that. Yeah. Okay. So, so, that means the subgroups have to meet before then, and we need to set our meetings before then. So, there'll be a couple meetings every month folks um 
So, right. so to track was... our, our agenda along a little bit, can I ask for volunteers to serve on A, B, and C so I can get that down? So let's start with A. Um, who wants to work on A? Okay, let's start from the beginning. What groups do you want to work on? <laughs> this is Marisa. Um, I would like to work in, I guess, um, I guess it's group A. I'm so sorry. I, you know, I can hardly hear you. This is Marisa, and I would like to uh, work in group A. Okay, Marisa. So, all right. I'm actually writing it on the template. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Uh, David? Um, I will work on the third one, C. C. Okay, David. Uh, anyone else want to jump in? Maybe we can go one at a time for those that are here. Oh, Vicky, uh, Vicky, do you have a do you have a preference? Vicky, you're muted. Okay, let's skip Vicky for now. Well, maybe she got sand off. Oh, no, I see her. Oh. I see her. She's just. She's not muted. Oh, something happened. All right. How about uh, Lavirna Lopez? Can I see what uh, I cannot see? I have A, B, and C. Um, C. Uh, is that it? C. Okay. I, I I would like to sign up for C. C. Well, we can't. Oh, okay. We do need uh, participants in the other two groups. So um, there's two in, in C already. So would you would you be interested in either A or B? Okay. Let's see. Can I see C again? C is to is is district and, and colleges revise their policies procedures. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, guys. Vicky's back. Yeah, great. And then I, while uh, Ludmirna thinks about it, I know Mike is not with us. Is that correct? Mike, are you Mike's not with us? I couldn't make it right. And, and then Maria, um, Alegria, and Barbara. So those are three, the three members that are not with us today. Well, we can just assign them. At, assign them? Here, yeah. Okay. And people who are here will give them a choice. Okay. Sounds good. So, Mirna, did you want to stick with C? Um, other discipline. I like C or. Um, yeah, I think uh, because Meredith, uh, I know I see Meredith name there. Uh, M Meredith is a member of the steering committee and she's supporting uh, the committee. And so she could actually be integrated into any, I'm thinking at Adrian too, if she wants to. Um, so it should be okay if we have uh, Ludmina there. Okay. Okay. Also considering A, but C really is resonates. Okay, you're on C. Okay. You gotta choose either A or B. Like I said, I'm gonna be a team player, and I'm gonna say, "Put you, put me where you need me, boss." Okay. Need you on like A or B? I'll give you a <laughs> A or B. I'll I'll go with B. Okay. So, and this is Vicky. Yes. Yes. All right. Is that everybody who's on here? Um. On. See, I think. So. So, yeah. I didn't be here for anything. Because we're already plugged in, no? Uh, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be in uh, A. Yeah. Debbie, you're going to be in B. And Sue, you're going to be in C. Is that right. correct? Right. Yes. I'm going to add Mike to 
B. Okay, I'd like to be. Shall I put uh, Barbara with uh, you, Myra? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. and Barbara. Barbara. And who else are we missing? And then we're missing, um, let's see, uh, Maria. Maria. Maria Alegria. A or B? Uh, toss the coin. How about we put her with you because I'm going to be asking people from these different groups to join us in, okay. in, in uh, B. Okay, sounds good. So put it on A, Maria. Okay. All right. And okay. I think we got... That task um, done. Yeah, I think we got everybody. Mm -hmm. No, I'll, uh, this is Mirna. I can reach out to Maria and, you know, I might be able to participate in group A for her or, you know, we could see it. Okay. Yeah, so we'll be reaching out. Uh, the three of us will be reaching out to now a little subgroup <laughs> um, to actually uh, schedule time to begin to to talk can about you add me? Can you add me to group A? You want to be? Okay. I can add you there. Um, this, this is Meredith. I'd like to help with C because I think I could help from the perspective of a trustee and also as a lawyer because I think that we oftentimes feel constricted by the way that the law is practiced, but it's not always the way, you know, you have, it's not always the limit, it's what people interpret at the time, which is oftentimes, in this case, as Vicki pointed out, more constrictive than it, than it actually is in reality. We got you there, Meredith. Got you there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard, Meredith. I'm excited. Cool. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. <laughs> but I agree with you, Meredith. I, uh, the policies are only as good as they are interpreted. And so there's a lot of leeway. And you see where a lot of times an organization will say, oh, this is the trend now, so we'll do a workshop on it. OK, we did it. We checked it off. And then they don't do anything. So th this is kind of where we have to, ha as, as was suggested by Adrian and others, that we have to have specific language that's going to call out all of these things and, and so that there isn't as much leeway or room for um, interpretation and implementation. So each of the subgroups will have to meet between now and the first uh, Tuesday in October, okay. uh, either once or twice to start uh, developing um, or filling out the work plan, coming up with uh, strategies. And now that we have the volunteers assigned, um, we're good there. We, we've been using Google Docs to uh, uh, do our work. So Myra, if you could add yeah. the committee can members mm -hmm. so they can work on the Google Docs. That yeah, can I, um, can I share that for just a moment um, so that folks see, or, or, or if you have it handy? Um, uh, uh, I, you could share okay, it. Go ahead, can you okay. share? Yeah, I can share. Okay. And so, um, so then everyone knows uh, how we're trying to um, kind of organize ourselves so then we can see what we're all working on. Do I have um, to turn off? So let's see, I'll be right. I shared, I shared my screen, guys. Um, this is right now the DEI integration um, folder. And it's starting to get. Yeah. But this is not our folder. Uh, we have another, a separate folder. <laughs> Set up one group one. Yes. Yeah. For we have a we are developing one for group one. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I was I was wondering whether you would like me to set up a subfolder for each group. Oh, sure. Yeah. Would that help you? Then you yeah, can actually be great. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Yeah, and then we'll go ahead and drop uh, the uh, the documents uh, that we need. Actually, I'll drop them off, right? I'll drop them in right now. If, uh, oh, um, Debbie, you're, you're putting the notes in the... You... Uh, I, I saved that one document. Yeah, if you saved it, maybe you might want to um, drop that one in there. Okay. And then I'll drop the one that we already have. I guess I have to go to that Google Doc. 
Okay, I'll do it later. Yeah. That's how, oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So, so there's, there's just a few days in between now and uh, Tuesday. Well, we're not going to meet. Before First of then. October, yeah. But what exactly. we'll do is report on this meeting. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And then by the first Tuesday in October, we'll have much more to report. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. And if you're interested in seeing what was already reported, um, it is right here. Uh, Triple C T D I in progress report. Oh, okay, great. So take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then going forward, uh, we'll, and they talked about this in the DEI and the statewide task force, that um, they will request reports from various uh, associations, CTV being one of them, um, for meetings. It'll be like seven to 10 minutes for the representatives there to speak about what their, their groups are doing. And, um, I actually have the, I didn't put it in Google Docs yet, but the, I'll share with you the format of, and it's similar to the, um, to the types of questions that are in this report, you know, what, what are your processes, um, progress report, um, you know, what have you, it's not, uh, challenges and opportunities, I think it's what they, uh, was different in the regular reports that were to the statewide task force. And then what support do you need? And they're constantly asking about that. What can we do um, to help? So Adrian, are you going to send the link to your Google Docs in order for us to access it? Um, yeah, uh, I think you already have access to this DEI integration one, right? Didn't I share that? Yeah, but, but, yes. okay. but it doesn't allow uh -huh. to, it doesn't allow us to add things. I just tried yeah to, to enter. Yeah, I just oh, tried yeah, to add our document. And I couldn't do it. Right. I'm gonna change the settings so that you can so you have right and okay. I will do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I was trying to um, yeah I know we did. to transfer <laughs> yes, a document. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So with that, um, it's a, so our work groups will probably meet once or twice a month, folks. So uh, I will. Add, uh, so each of the co-chairs of this committee will be contacting their subgroups to, to calendar a date. And when is a good time for us as a total group to meet? It probably it needs to be before October sixth. So can we meet as a whole group uh, the week of September 28th? So I don't have to do another doodle poll. Can you tell me a good day and time of the week of September 28th to meet? Tuesdays and Thursdays are best for me. Um, Say that again. This is Mirna. Tuesdays and Thursdays are best for me. Okay. And then um, Mondays and uh, Mondays and Tuesdays actually work better for me that week. Um, so it sounds like Tuesday sounds is like common. Tuesday. Um, and Tuesday's work. fine for me. The 29th. No, Tuesday. Do we have the uh, our ACC? Is the ACC? The, there you go. That's it. Uh, my meeting is at three o'clock that day so we'd have to do it before then so um it's work good for me on that tuesday morning would be good for me tuesday um, morning and does nine o'clock does nine o'clock work again morning nine o'clock tuesday nine o'clock works for vicky nine, nine o'clock everyone nine o'clock the 29th okay i'm gonna calendar that and then if you will tell your um you know other members who weren't here today. That's when we're going to meet as a total group. 
Yeah. Or maybe sending, um, sending a, um, a follow-up message with that. I will. Yeah. I, I, I can do that. Okay. And I will hope that I can join because I got the news just the other day that I'm on jury duty call. <laughs> that we, that we'll see if I get lucky or not. All right. Do we have, uh, is everyone on Office 365? Uh, can we, uh, is everyone using Office 365? No, oh no, okay. I just went, I was wondering. Well, is there a better collaboration tool that I know? Well, because I use it, when you send the meeting, um, the meeting proposal, you know, you can include everyone and it goes, it gets populated into the calendar automatically and so. And so if, uh, if but the, you know, all the uh, districts have to have. Sure. You can do that with Zoom though. When you send out the Zoom thing, if you indicate, um, there might be a little checkbox you do when you're setting up the Zoom meeting that you want a calendar invite to go along, but that'll, be, that'll come out in the email. Um, and I usually click on the calendar in my calendar. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay, and now we gave you a lot of uh, additional reading. So uh, I encourage you to take a look at those documents we attached and, and some of the PowerPoints. A lot of work has already gone on in DEI at the national level with the group uh, Meredith chairs, the ACCT uh, trustee group has been working on this for quite some time. So they've developed a lot of tools and you may find them useful in your work, so I'd encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, and with that, I think we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish today. Sue, Myra, anything else? No, but no, thank I you, think, everyone. I think yeah. it would just uh, quickly to wrap up the next steps. Um, so we have uh, uh, to reach out to our subgroup members uh, to schedule a meeting uh, before October 1st. <laughs> And then uh, there is an expectation that the committees would meet um, once or twice a year or a year, once and twice a month um, uh, or um, more, you know, or more if, uh, if they identified that they have to do that. Yes. All right. Perfect. And with that, I think we are good to go, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you all. It's Thank you. Nice meeting all of you. Looking forward to collaborating with you. Yes. All right. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. See you at the webinar. Yep. <laughs>